In this video I want to introduce you to exponential rhythms. It's a neat trick that can be used to transition to a different part of a track, or to increase tension in your music, as well as to do some advanced sound design. There are multiple ways you can achieve it, and in this video I have decided to show you 4 easiest ones, that you can try out yourself, right after you finish watching this video. Here I have put together a short composition, that demonstrates different application of this technique. Pay attention to those 4 green regions, and don't worry if you can't hear them clearly. I will walk you through each one right after. Let's break it down. The very first intro part is triggered by this pattern region, and as you can see there is nothing special, just 16 notes in a row, and the sound itself doesn't include any MIDI effects. Now when I play it again, pay attention to the playhead and its speed, or look at the tempo of the project. Have you noticed how playback of the project slows down? If I open the global tracks you can see that I drew a tempo curve, which starts at 370 and goes down to 92 bpm, and the rest of the project continues at 92 bpm. You can edit tempo line as any other automation line, and make changes to speed of the project at any point of the track. I'd recommend you using MIDI or pattern tracks instead of audio samples if you want to alter tempo to avoid artifacts. Now let's move to the second region. Here as well I didn't use any MIDI effects, so I can play the instrument as usual. Uh. Let's listen to the pattern itself, and then talk about how I modified its playback speed. Uh. If I open step sequencer you'll see that I tied some notes, and then used note repeat function to create this ramping up effect. It's great if you want to stay in sync with the rest of the project. Also there is another feature that allows you to change playback of each step independently. All you need to do is add a few steps, and then switch editing mode to step rate. And now any step can have independent rate value. It's a bit hard to create grooves this way, but if you zoom in, Logic will give you some visual feedback on length of each step. With some experimentation you can get really good results, but in most cases no repeat function works good enough. Now I can move to the third region, and see how we can get exponential rhythms using Logic Sampler. Here's a snare sample. If I open MIDI editor you can see that it's just a single MIDI note, so it's not where the triggers are coming from. Let's go to inspector and open the sampler to see what is happening there. Quick sampler is using a single snare shot in a loop. If I play any note on my keyboard you'll notice how looping area is expanding. That's because I assigned the first LFO to loop end. So basically saw shape LFO is modulating loop length, which is shown as yellow layer in the main window. If I play it again you'll see how it starts short and gets longer over time creating this effect. Changing LFO amount to minus 100% will make starting looping range very short. It will sound almost granular. Try experimenting with the range. And since we have two LFOs available, I assigned the second one to the pitch to make it sound more interesting. This is a good way to increase tension, or create a downer effect when you transition to another part of a song. Ok, now let's move to the last example, which explores Logic's MIDI effects. We can listen to it first. This is probably the most obvious way of creating exponential rhythms. Here I use Logic's modulator and arpeggiator. I'm gonna play it one more time. Look at the rate knob. You can do it by simply using automation to change rate speed over time. 
but I decided to use modulator in this example. If you didn't know, you can use modulator to assign LO4 or envelope to any parameter of other MIDI tools in Logic. Select Learn Parameter option and click on the one you want to modulate. Then you can alter speed and depth of modulation. And that's it. This technique can be used to create unusual patterns or transition effects. I wouldn't use it in every track I produce, but in some situations this trick works really well. Have fun.